Hi. Thank you for stopping by the Marita Minutes. Before I get started, I just like to say that everything on my channel is alleged, and in my opinion, and done for entertainment purposes only. Um, if you are new here, welcome. To all my new subscribers, thank you for joining me on my journey. Please like, share, and subscribe. Now let's get into it. I'm coming to you a little late with this because I'm actually just finding out. Um, if you all are familiar with Tita Talks, she is one of our fellow YouTubers. I was watching her prior to me even getting started last year because I wasn't doing YouTube this time last year. Um, and I used to follow her. I used to follow her on her lives. Um, the reason why she came across my radar, if any of you are a part of the Real Housewives sector, um, her sister appeared, has appeared several times um, on Real Housewives of Potomac as a friend of one of the housewives, Mia Thornton. Her name is Jacqueline Blake. Anyway, I think it was not this past season, but the season before that, Mia brought her to uh, the show. And evidently, they kind of went through it on the show. and um, But it was happening in real life as far as them, you know, their friendship breaking up and things of like that nature. I remember prior to them showing the season that they had gone to social media and were going after each other, attacking each other. So it was happening in real life. So I don't think Tita was allowed to express herself until they, of course, aired the episodes. And once that happened, well, she took to her YouTube channel and went in on Mia on behalf of her sister. So that's how um, she came about to me. Um, plus, I believe Mims, make it make sense, um, interviewed her. So that was another thing. And I guess, and I guess, and I think they talked about the whole blow up or whatever, what have you. Anyway, following her, um, you got to know her because she went live all, all the time. She said going live was therapeutic to her. Um, she struggled. Um, she tells her story about her struggle with addiction. Um, she talks, she has some stories. I mean, she shared for what she could share on YouTube, um, with us and how she was moving back then when she was out there. Um, she was out there for a while too. Um, pretty lady though. You could tell she was, she's still attractive considering what she's gone through, but you could tell that she was downright gorgeous. Okay. I believe their family, I want to say her mom is Filipino or Filipino and black. I'm not sure. Um, but they have Filipino in them and, um, but a beautiful family. Um, you, she brings you into some of her other family members. She would always go live when they had different events. Um, she has a daughter, she has a son. Um, her daughter even has a little girl. So she has a granddaughter. And, you know, you got to be, you know, she was, she was personable for the ones that followed her. I mean, she didn't have a, a large following, but she had a following, you know, and I was starting to get one of, cause I mean, I don't know, it was something about her that kind of drew you to her. Right. And I think it was her compassion for children. Um, cause that was what she basically did. Um, she did daycare and I mean, she said, I, and she would always call it, I got a gig, <laughs> Because, you know, however long that they needed her, she would do it for, you know, and she would put on her uniform like it would be like a scrub, a little colorful scrub. And then she would always have a bonnet to match the scrub. Cute, you know, cute lady. So she had and every now and again, she would introduce you to, you know, who the kids that she was, you know, watching. And, you know, she you'd go with her like she'd say, get ready with me. She'd wake up with you. Um. And then you see her fixing her breakfast. She getting her son off to school or what have you, right? Going to the store, taking her mom to the doctor's visits. I mean, that's what she did most of her lives. 
And I was catching most of them or I would watch bits and pieces of them if I, you know, because I did, I do work. <laughs> so, but this particular time, this time last year, I was not this time last year, but around August, I guess. I had come down with meningitis and I was hospitalized for a couple, for about four or five days. And so after which, when I was released, of course I was home. So I was working from home and I had opportunity to, you know, work from home. I was watching YouTube on the TV it's in front of me. And, um, you know, I would keep, I would put her live up or I would put lives up for different people, but just so happened I had her live up that day. She was watching a little boy. If I can remember his name, I'll, I'll say it, but I don't remember the little boy's name. He would, had to be like one or two, no, no more than two. He wasn't talking very much, and he still was a little wobbly, so I don't know if he was just starting to really walk. But you saw her take care of him. She would always fix him like grilled cheese sandwiches. I remember his name, Dada Grilled Cheese. But anyway, she would always fix some grilled cheese sandwiches, and, um, you know, he just hung out with her, and he – Seemed to be really, you know, a daughter. They would sit outside and eat their lunch. I remember she took them somewhere to a park and they sat outside and ate lunch. But this particular day, I think she had gone over to her mother's and I think she was taking her mom to the doctor's. When she got over there, her mom wasn't ready, so she had to get herself together. She said, Well, okay, well, get yourself together. I remember her saying, Get yourself together and me and him will go out, sit outside and then you will come back in when you're ready. And so I was like, okay. So, you know, they walk out to the back. And then in the back, you know, her mom had like a pavilion that they would sit under um, on days that were real nice. And uh, I think she has a pool back there. I believe she has a pool back. Yeah, her mom has a pool. You know, they would sit. And he would have like his toys and his cars or the children who would come over there would have their toys. They weren't his, but he'd play with them. And I remember that, And you know. And it was plenty of times where she would record them. Not to really do anything, just relaxing underneath the pavilion. On this particular day, though, she fell asleep waiting for her mom to get ready. And he was up, he was walking around, but that was the norm. You know, she'd be like, be, you know, in and out dozing, but she fell asleep for, you know, some time. And I mean, I was up, I just kept alive up because I was working because I wasn't watching, watching because, you know, I don't sit there and just do this while she's sleeping. I'm not watching, I'm not a weirdo. But, you know, she would be in the background while I did. And it kind of made my day go by. So I remember looking up and she, she said, oh, she jumped up and she ran because he was outside of the camera view. So I didn't see him. So I remember when she came back through the camera view, she was walking really, she grabbed some stuff out of the chairs that were on the, on the under the pavilion. And then she turned around and went in the house. She's walking kind of fast and he was in her arms. But I noticed he was very limp. So I said, oh, what did he not? Did he fall down and hit his head? You know, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, oh, my goodness, he passed out or knocked himself out or whatever. Because when she comes back and she's, she gets her phone, she realized the live is still going. Um, somebody in the live must have typed, is everything OK? And she said, oh, yeah, he was fine. He's something. She said something about like, you know, like it was OK. Like, it was anything to worry about. I'm like, okay. But right as she was standing there, she was just standing there. Her mom comes to the door and was like, calls her out, calls her name and says, did you call him? And I don't know, maybe, she, and at the initially I thought she was asking her, did she call her, the, the, there was the little boy's parents because of what happened. But now, hindsight 2020, I remember before she got the live, the ambulance, I heard an ambulance siren. So I'm assuming that's what she meant. Did you call 911? And she was like, yeah. And she was vaping because she's she always vaped. And she um, was taking a vape and she was just looking. And all of a sudden, the, the video stopped. She stopped the live. So I'm thinking, you know, okay, well, she'll come back on tomorrow and let us know, you know, what happened, what's going on with the kid, you know. Nothing for months. And I'm like, what happened? You know, and I said, well, maybe she's gotten to the point where she don't want to put everything on live anymore. And I get that too. You know, this is what you do every day. You don't want everybody in your business and things happen. You don't want 
a foot job. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I thought maybe she was just staying away because of that. And um, and she did take sabbaticals from from YouTube, you know, at at times. So it wasn't anything un- out of the norm. But I thought by now, you know, she would have put posted something like or put an event up. I was like, summertime again. I know she outside. Well, I found out. I just found out. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm late, but you know, I happened to look, and it looks like about a month ago or, or so, she was convicted of involuntary manslaughter for the little boy because he drowned in the pool. Wow. And it was like something in my gut said something happened. But when she came back and said, he's okay, he's all right. I didn't think anything of it because his body looked limp when she carried him in the in the house. And I feel so sorry for her. I feel sorry for everybody involved. I feel sorry for his family, you know, that dropped him off in her care. I feel sorry for her family who now has to... Um, they'll be without her for, you know, some time. Um, cause I believe she was convicted. She got five years all suspended, but 18 months. So she may do a year, I guess. So give or take. Um, but still she's someone's daughter. She's someone's mother. She's someone's grandmother. She's someone's sister. She's someone's friend. However, doesn't they'll get her back. But the family that lost their little boy who, didn't get a chance to do anything with his life. I mean, I don't know. He might have been one or two. It's so sad all the way around. So, so sad. But the thing of it is, that was her passion. And she, you know, you could tell that she really adored him as well. She'd be kissing him and stuff. And, you know, I know that had to break her heart. I, I don't. I can't even imagine how she may have felt. Especially when she took him in the house because she knew already. Because if something happened to him and he knocked himself out and he was still, you know, vibrant in the world, I don't have her leaving him in there with her mother and her coming back out. She knew then, clearly, right? Wow. Wow. That was, I, I don't even know what to say. But prayers to all the families involved, to both families. And um, God will take care. Everyone be blessed. Peace.